Have you just played the game first to 22? And are you looking for a way to tease the activity out and explore the rich level of mathematics hidden within it? Well, this video is for you. Hi, my name's Tom Moore, and in the first to 22 classroom activity video, we actually had a look at how to play the game with my good friend Emily. Now, as students would have gone through and explored this task a little bit, they may have started to see some patterns which arise. Well, this video is all about exploring those patterns further and seeing how you can get that information from your students and encourage them to see these patterns. The key to this activity is going through and showing students just enough so that they can make a start on it, but not too much so that they can start to see the strategies in order to be able to play and win the game. So as you saw in the classroom activity version of this video, we actually went through and played just one round of the game. And what this shows is just enough information for the students just to be able to go through and play the game. But then as they go through and play it a few more times, they'll start to recognize some strategies that can come into play. For example, they may recognize that 15 is a number that will help them to win it. That is, if they land on 15, there is no way that the other person can beat them. Now, as a teacher, you should be walking around and having a look for students who are at this point because they'll say, oh, I got 15. And that's where you go, well, that's interesting. If you know you can win when you get to 15, is there another number along the way that can also guarantee that you win? This then gets students to realize, oh, well, there's more to this task than what meets the eye and gets them to start looking at the task and exploring it much deeper. The other thing is, it actually then encourages students to stop playing against each other, but start working together in order to be able to solve the problem. So they're actually working collaboratively now rather than competitively. As groups go through and explore this activity, they'll recognize that 22 isn't the only number that they should be going for. And in fact, there are other numbers along the lines that they should be hitting. For example, they would have found 15 originally, but then they may find that eight and one are also target numbers that they should be hitting in order to ensure that they reach 22. So what does this mean for their strategy? Well, it means that if they win, they can make sure that they go first in the next game and actually never lose another game. Because if they go first, they can flip over one, and that means that they can then get to eight, which means they can then get to 15, which means that they can then win with a score of 22. And then it starts all over again. Now the initial version of first to 22 that we've explored thus far is really only scratching the surface of how far you can go with it. There's a really important question that mathematicians often ask and that is what happens if? For example, I might say, well what happens if I'm no longer aiming for a target number of 22? What happens if I wanna try and reach 25? What does that change in terms of the target numbers that I have to hit? Or what happens if I wanna make it the target number of 100? You can see here that that's definitely gonna change the game. The other thing that I might ask is, well, what happens if I bring in the seventh card? Like you can see here. How is that going to affect my target numbers as I go through and play the game? Maybe I could change both constraints, that is, have bring in the seventh card and also change my target number too. What's going to change there in terms of the target numbers that I need to hit along the lines as well? Students may also come up with their own what happens if questions as they complete the game. It's important that we actually give the students the opportunity to play these games and explore these what happens if questions themselves because this will actually generate interest from the students and give them some ownership over the task. For example, I've seen students say, well, what happens if I no longer have my ones in play? Is that going to change the effect of the game or how it all plays out? Or what happens if once I flipped over, all of my cards, what will actually happen to the number? Great question, really good investigation that you can go through and explore. And you can change the numbers up and all of those things too. Now, when you play the game for a while and you just simply follow it for the way that it's intended originally, that is to have the numbers one to six and change the actual target numbers, you can then start to come up with an algebraic rule. So what seems like a simple addition game actually can build up into working with algebra and generalizing. And you can see just the level of complexity and richness that is hidden within the mathematics within the game. Wow, don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. And also, if you enjoyed the video, check out all the other ones that we've put together with some great activities that you can use in your class. My name's Tom Moore, we'll see you next time.